So today we officially start our second to last unit of the year. And this is unit 9. So unit 9 is correct. Remember it was unit 10. Um, that's data analysis. So the last book should say unit 10. This is our unit 9. That was my fault. So this unit is called root and irrational numbers. So today we're going to focus on this root piece and tomorrow we will review these irrational numbers. You talked about the rational and irrational numbers at the middle school as well as numbers sets such as the whole numbers, integers, counting numbers, so on and so forth, which all make up the set of real numbers. But today we're just going to focus on the root piece. So let's take a look at our first note page. Today we're only going to cover lesson one. So I'm going to start at the top of the page uh, with a little bit of reading that's there. It says square roots, cube roots, and high level roots are important mathematical tools because they are the inverse operations to operations of squaring and cubing. So let's go back and review some inverse operations and then we'll explain how the square root is the inverse of squaring. Okay, so let's put an arrow at the top of the page. Some examples of inverse operations. So if we take a look at addition, the inverse of addition is subtraction because it's the subtraction that un undoes that operation of addition. And let's put a comma. And then for the, I'll put the dot for multiplication. To undo multiplication, and we divide. Okay, so when we take and square a number, so going back to this here, so example would be, um, let's do, I don't know, let's do 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4. So how do we undo that square? The opposite of squaring would be to so you want to work here and get back to the 2. We want to take the square root of 4 to get 2. Okay, so squaring and square root are opposite operations. If I talk about cubing, so the square root has an index of 2. This little exponent is called an index, I-N-D-E-X. If I take a look at, say, 2 cubed, and remember, 2 cubed, if I open up the calculator and I have yet to adjust the screen, it looks good. So if I take 2 cubed, that means 2 times 2 times 2 three times. So 2 cubed is 8. Okay, so how do I go from the 8 and get back to the 2? That would be to take the cube root of 8. So the root, and has that little tiny exponent in front of the radical symbol, that is a 3 here where the index of 2, I want to take my white out and get rid of that, we don't write the index of 2, okay? That does mean what number times itself twice gives you 4. So therefore the cube root of 8, what number do I multiply itself 3 times to get 8, would be 2, okay? I'll show you the calculator. Um, some more so some of the functions like how to take the square root and the cube root but let's finish up that paragraph so in this unit we will study these operations as well as numbers that come from using them first some basic review of what you've seen before okay so this is um, review so let me slide this up Find the value of each of the following principal square roots. So we can say principal are just square roots. The principal just means it wants the positive. Because remember, okay, that when, so let me grab a scrap sheet of paper. You can take, for example, okay, 2 squared, like we just said, means 2 times 2, which is 4. We can also take a negative 2 and square it. So that means negative 2 times negative 2. That also 
equals the positive 4. So when I actually take the square root of 4, okay, I could have two answers. If there's no sign out in front, that means they want the positive. Um, so the square root of 4 is 2. If they put a negative sign out in front, so negative square root of 4, that means they want the negative root. So this would be a negative 2. Another option is for them to put the symbol positive and negative root of 4 they want. So the positive negative square root of 4 is equal to a positive and negative 2. Or you can write your answer as negative 2 and positive 2. Okay? So when they say the principal square root or when there's no symbol out front, they want the positive. Okay? So it says to find the square roots and then write a reason. We're only going to do this for a couple. And let's just do it for the top row. So A, B, and C. So the square root of 25 is 5. You can do this uh, operation on your calculator. The square root button is right above the square button right here, pointing to with my pen, is the operation and its inverse operation is right above it. So second square root of 25 is 5. Notice if I put the negative out front, negative square root of 25, it'll give me the negative 5. Okay? But it didn't have that negative symbol. So why is it 5? Because... 5 squared equals 25. So we're only going to write that reason for a, b, and c. The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 squared is 9. And the square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared equals 100. Okay? So now let's finish up with that row D through F. The square root of 0. That's not a trick question. The square root of 0 is just 0 because 0 times 0 is 0. Okay? When you're taking the square root of a fraction, your answer is going to be a fraction. And what you're really doing is taking the square root of the numerator, so you can break it up into two radicals, the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 4. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. I can choose to keep that in fraction form, so leave it 1 half. You can also write it as 0 0.5. Typically, you'll see it on the regions as the fraction. Okay. So the square root of 64 is 8, divided by the square root of 9, which is 3. Since I cannot divide 8 by 3, I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. So when the denominator is larger or smaller than the numerator, so the numerator is larger, then it's improper. When the numerator is smaller, the denominator is larger, this is a proper fraction. Or this is improper. You can change improper fractions to a mixed number, but we're going to leave it just as that. Okay? Now let's go to the next section. I don't want to move it too fast. Okay. So it is generally agreed upon that all positive real numbers have two square roots, a positive one and a negative one. Now that's what I had explained on this half sheet. Okay? We simply designate which one we want by either including a negative sign or leaving it off. So if we're taking a look at the square root, so give all square roots of each. So let's put the square root symbol above all of these. Okay. Give all square roots of each of the following numbers. So the square root of 4, so all square roots would be 2 and negative 2. Okay? Remember, that's because, we'll go back to here, 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. The next one, 
The square root of 36 is 6 and negative 6. Doesn't matter the order that I put the 6 and negative 6. And then the square root of 1 16th, again the square root of the numerator, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 16 is 4. So it's 1 4th and the negative 1 4th. Okay, you can always do a check for any one of them. So if I were to check this one, I want to check what is negative 6 squared equal to? And then, so equals what? And then what is 6 squared equal to? So if we go to the calculator, okay, let's get that out of there. I actually think that was a good view. So 6 squared is 36. And then remember, whenever you want to square negative, you must put it in parentheses. Negative six, uh, 6 squared is also 36. Good. All right, exercise three reviews function notation. And it even says you have a function. So remember, functions can be f of x, g of x, p of x, so on and so forth. So this is a square root function, okay? And we'll take a look at its graph in a, in a few lessons here. So which of the following is the value of f of 46? So this means, since x was in the parentheses, that the x is the 46. So if x equals 46, then we can say the square root of 46 plus 3 is equal to what? Well, we have to simplify this. Simplify what's underneath the radical first. 46 plus 3 is 49. And the square root of 49, it didn't say if it wanted the positive or negative, is both 7 and negative 7. But since it's multiple choice, it can give you more than one answer. Okay? And last, square roots have an interesting property when it comes to multiplication. We will discover that property in the next exercise. Find the value of each of the products. So, to discover the property, I'm going to actually rewrite these numbers in a different form, right on the left, because uh, the left looks slightly different than the right, and then multiply. So the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of 9 is 3. And then 2 times 3 is 6. So I actually took the square root first. Over here, you can see it's just one radical symbol with 4 times 9 underneath. Well, whenever there's an operation, so the operation's multiplication, whenever it's underneath the symbol, we want to do that first. So this is going to be the square root of, so 4 times 9, the square root of 36, which is also 6. We get the same answer. So doing the same thing here on the left, square root first, square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of 25 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. So over here, the operation's underneath, so I have to copy down my radical symbol and do the operation first. 4 times 25 is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. Okay. So take a minute to flip your page, and then we're just going to do the back, and then we'll have a practice activity for you. All right. So reading at the top, what should you notice in the last exercise, or what you should notice in the last exercise is the following prime property of square roots. Um, so the property is that when you're multiplying two radicals, you can rewrite that as one radical of that product, okay? So the square root of 9 times the square root of 4 equals the square root of 9 times 4. They mean the same thing, or vice versa, so if you switch it. So the square root of... Let's do uh, 25 times um, 3. That equals the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. You can just break it up. Okay? So down in the f this next set of exercises, right, 
Above it it says, one obvious reason for this is to multiply two unfriendly. So what does he mean by unfriendly? Well, when you can take the square root, that's a friendly number. When you can't take the square root here, such as the square of eight, it's not a perfect square, that's considered unfriendly. So one obvious use for this is to multiply two unfriendly square roots to get a nice result. So let's see. Square root of 2 times the square root of 8. So let's rewrite it as 1 square root. 2 times 8 is 16. Okay, so again we had that unfriendly. Well actually they're both unfriendly because we can't take the square root of 2 as well. But then when I did actually multiply them I got the a perfect square which is friendly. So the square root of 16 is 4. The next one. These are both unfriendly, cannot take the square root of 12, and we can't take the square root of 3. So 12 times 3 is 36. So we write that as one radical, and then the square root of 36 is 6. And then last, 20 times 5 is the square root of 20 times 5 is 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. Okay? Now let's look below. So one less obvious use for the square root property above is simplifying square roots. Okay, what do we mean by simplifying? Okay, so let me take out a scrap sheet again. If I had the fraction 3, 6, that's not in simplest form. So if I wanted to reduce the fraction or simplify it, that would reduce to 1 half. And what we're really doing in the process is, okay, so 3, 6 would be 3 times 1 and 3 times 2 because the common factor is the 3 that we're canceling out, okay? So that's what simplifying means. So this is a fairly antiquated skill that is almost completely irrelevant to algebra but it often arises on standardized tests and is thus good, uh, a good skill to become fluent with. You will see radicals next year in geometry, so we need to know how to simplify them, and it's something that should be pretty quick for you guys. So exercise six. To introduce simplifying square roots, let's do the following first. List out the first 10 perfect squares. Yeah, so we need our perfect squares. If you have your vocab cards, this would be something to add to those uh, vocab cards. But you may not have brought them home, and that's okay. All right? So our perfect squares. So perfect squares, all right, would be a number like 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. It would be a number like 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. So we have to, what do we get when we square numbers? So we square 1, we get 1. We square 2, we get 4. We square 3, we get 9. We square 4, we get 16. We square 5, we get 25. 6 times 6, 36. 7 times 7, 49. 8 times 8, 64. 9 times 9, 81. And then 10 times 10, 100. I think that's 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're good. Okay? Now consider the radical 18. So that's unfriendly. We can't take the square root of it. Which of these perfect squares is a factor? Okay? So two factors. Remember for vocab, it's factor times factor equals a product. So if we look at the factors of 18, that would be 1 times 18 gives us 18. That would be 2 times 9 gives us 18. And 3 times 6 gives us a product of 18. This question says which of these factors is a perfect square, and that would be 9. Okay? So, 9. Simplify the square root of 18. Okay, so this is also known as writing in simplest radical form. So the directions will always say to do that. So what we do is we actually, we're going to go up here, and we use this property. Okay, so let's slide it back up. The square root of 18. 
So here's the number. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it as the product of two numbers, with one of those numbers being the perfect square. So it's 9 times 2. Okay? So we write it like that first, so then we can write it like this. Square root of 9, square root of 2. Now, if I don't write the multiplication symbol, that does mean multiplication. So over here it's saying radical 9 times radical 2. And then we'll be able to take the square root of 9, which is 3. And then radical 2, that's unfriendly, we got to leave it radical 2. And again, when we don't include the symbol in between, that does mean multiplication. And one of the ways you can check to make sure you simplified correctly is type in the square root of 18 first. So we see that decimal. And then type in 3 radical 2. If the decimals match, and here they do, you know you are correct. That doesn't mean you're in simplest form, that just means you're in an equivalent form, okay? But if this number right here does not have a perfect square factor, then you are in simplest form, okay? So let's finish up reducing these examples at the bottom. All right, so if it's helpful, uh, can I show it on the screen? Yes, I can fit it all. Let me just slide it a little bit to the left. Okay, I want to be able to see all of these, right? Because I need to use one of these numbers as a factor of what's underneath the radical symbol. And you want to use the largest. And uh, Maybe there's an example down below where I can show you that if you don't use the largest, then you'll have to just keep simplifying. So the square root of 8. So if you write down the factors of 8 off to the side, if you're not good with your factors. So we've got 1 times 8, 2 times 4, and that's it. Those are the only factors of 8. The only perfect square is the 4. So let's break it down. Now, sorry, I'm kind of um, skipping around. You can skip this step right here. And you can go right to this step, which I do. So instead of breaking that down into the product of two numbers underneath the radical, I'm going to write the two radical symbols to start and do 4 times 2. Always put that perfect square out front. So the square root of 4 is 2, and we have 2 radical 2. Square root of 45. So as I said, if you need to, start by listing out the factors of 45 first. Okay, I'll do this one more time, but I'm pretty good with my factors. If you're not, get out some index cards and practice them with somebody at home. So we have 1 times 45. 45 is not even, so I can divide it by 2. We can do 3 times 15, right? 4 times, no, 5. 5 times 9. I think that's it. And I just remembered too, a cool trick. If you go to the y equals, I just remembered this, and if you type in, go to your fraction key, 45 divided by x. So you want to know all the numbers. Can I get that closer for you? Will it focus? No. I want to know all the numbers that divide 45. So on the calculator, I put 45 divided by x. When I go to the table, that'll tell me all the numbers. I'm going to go to the positive ones. All the numbers that divide 45. So you can see the 1 times 45 there. Um, if there's a fraction bar, that means that number doesn't divide evenly. But if you take 45 over 2 and multiply by 2, you do get 45. So there's the 3 times 15, the two whole numbers, and then 5 times 9. And you can keep scrolling, and we see these are all uh, fractions, except for the repeated. Instead of 5 times 9, it's 9 times 5. Okay? So the largest perfect square is the 9. So 45, square root of 45 reduced, is radical 9 times radical 5. So square root of 9 is 3. And we just copy down that unfriendly radical. So it's 3 radical 5. 
And let's do 48. So I know that 4, for instance, 4 is a perfect square, and 4 goes into 4 and 8. So it's 4 times 12. So if I reduce that, that becomes, and I'm going to write it over here, 2 radical 12. Because the square root of 4 is 2. However, remember, I look at this radical, radical 12, and that's not the small, or that is also divisible by another perfect square. Okay? The factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. So it still has a perfect square factor. So if I break down 12, so bring down the 2, it doesn't just go away, and break down the 12, that would be 4 times 3. And remember, this is all connected by multiplication, so once you remove that symbol, you must put in the multiplication symbol. So it becomes 2 times 2 radical 3, and 2 times 2 would be 4 radical 3. If I would have used the largest perfect square factor of 48, okay, so I'll do it in red. That would have been 16. 16 times 3. So if I, again, if I'd used the largest, I would have gotten to my answer much quicker and easier so I didn't have to simplify twice like I did in blue. So make sure you always use that largest perfect square. All right, last row. Here we go. We're on a roll. And we can see here, in that last row, they've thrown in two negatives. So they want the negative roots of those numbers. So 75, so bring your negative, break it down in the two radicals. Now think of 75 cents. 75 cents is made up of three quarters. So 25 is the largest perfect square factor that goes into 75. It's 25 times three. In fact, it's the only perfect square factor. Square root of 25 is 5, so final answer is negative 5 radical 3. Square root of 72, now watch out because 72 has a lot of perfect square factors. So let's just take a minute to write it down. So we have 1 times 72, 2 times 36, 72 divisible by 3 is 24. 72 divisible by 4 is 18. It's not divisible by 5. 72 is divisible by 6. Um, so 6 times 12. Not divisible by 7, but 8 times 9. So I'm going to highlight the perfect squares. We've got 4, uh, 9, and 36. Well, we have 1, 2, but notice that if... <laughs> We don't ever want to divide by 1 or factor out the 1 because the 1's just going to keep the number the same. So of all these perfect squares, I need to use the 36 because the 36 is the biggest. So 72 breaks down into 36 times 3, or radical 36 times, not 3, that should be a 2. So that becomes 6 radical 2. And the last one, well, I'll give you a hint. Any multiple of 100, right? So it's going to be the 100 is the perfect square factor. So 100, 200, 300. So this is 100 times 5. It had the negative out front, so negative 10 radical 5. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining me.